Yes, I want to share with you something from my devotion of Psalm 38. And in that verse of the 14th verse, in the 14th verse, it, first of all, this psalm here is a psalm that would tell David. And it's for an offering, a memorial offering. And in this offering, written in the psalm, the psalmist is very poetic in that the psalmist really brings the imagery alive of how he or she feels and or how one feels when they are in sin. When you are in sin, you are not just enraptured by sin, but sin consumes your very presence. Uh, it consumes who you are, even physically. There are some things that happen. And though the writer here may be using metaphoric, figurative language, the language is so rich and substantive that you can basically smell the very sores that this psalmist is talking about. When sin has clung to your body, and that your bones have now lost its marrow and healing. Your skin becomes festered because you are now fasting uh, by sin. Your flesh now becomes rotten by sin. And the psalmist beckons and begs and asks of God to not, not correct him or her or even a, a nation uh, while you are in wrath, God. And the psalmist here uh, alludes to how God is so mighty and even points to the nature of God, the judgment nature of God, the wrathful nature of God. You see, quite often we try to talk about God uh, cataphatically, positive talks about what God is. And, and, and here the writer brings about, yes, talking about God, what God is. Uh, but also brings about the understanding in a poetic way. Um, is this a frastic? I don't even know. But in such a, a poetic way to paint the imagery of how one is when one is being uh, held down by sin. And so the, the psalmist is begging God, please God, I understand. The psalmist sees and acknowledges where... Uh, the state of being. Uh, many times we try to get solutions, but we don't even see the problem. The problem has somehow become translucent that we, we may see through it. We don't even see it. it the text, it, it's not that we're reading in it. It's right there. It's plain and it's simple. It's nothing complex or intricate about it, but we could only get solutions by understanding, acknowledging that there's a problem. Psychologists always say a man that's in denial can never change. A person who sees self, and we see even in uh, the book of Corinthians, we talk, we talk, when we talk about communion, and when we talk about fellowship with God, it's very, very simple uh, that we ought to examine our heart. We ought to examine ourselves to see who we are in the faith. Uh, before we partake, we shall not partake of it unworthily, but which means we ought to know where we are, who we are, and who in whom and in whose we are. So you have to understand that you need a God. The psalmist in Psalm 38 really breaks it. Do not forsake me, O Lord, because if you do, surely I will suffer. Surely I will die. The 13th, 14th verse that really captured me. I have become like a man who does not hear and in whose mouth are no rebukes. There are people that are against you. We know that. And that should not be a primal focus here. Of course, seek first the kingdom of God and righteousness. All these things will be added onto us. But in, uh, we think about worrying. We think about what comes after that because... It talks about worrying about tomorrow. And you should not worry about these things. And it, what comes to our mind is these materialistic things, these resources, and, you know, these abundance of possessive things, which possesses us because we really don't possess it. But here we see uh, the verse that precedes it. It talks about, I am like a deaf man, I do not hear, like a mute man who does not open his mouth. 
as you are going through your days and as you're going through your life, you have to be able to rebuke the things that people have been speaking contrary to the purpose of God over you. Though it may uh, appear to be factual, you are sick. It may appear that you are weak. It may appear that you are dying. Because that may appear to be, because it may look to be, does not mean you have to agree with it. Your mouth does not need to agree with it. Your eyes does not need to agree with it. Your ears uh, basically does not need to agree with it. He said, but I'm like a deaf man. He does not hear like a mute man who does not open his mouth. I have become like a man who does not hear once again and in whose mouth are no rebukes. You living in this world, you know the adversary is prowling around like a lion seeking whom he could devour. You understand that, you know that, you should not sit idly by. The enemy is plotting, speaking, sinning the henchmen how to get you. You have to understand that you must not hold your mouth, but you must speak of rebukes contrary to that which appears to be the fact. Yes, 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 yes. You are sick. Yes, you are weak, but in your mouth ought to have a word. This is not going to be so. I shall live and not die. I shall proclaim the word. I shall do exactly what God has purposed in me to do. So though you are in that stage that you're feeling down and low, I want you, I invite you right now. If you, if you do not know God as your personal Savior, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, who died for you, uh, a debt that you can never pay back, but, but in this life you are to live victorious, understanding the decree and declare the words of God, the words of life uh, and truth, the words that will bring about and usher into the kingdom of God. In this world that is topsy-turvy, that you will speak life to these dead situations, I invite you right now to open up your mouth right now and say, I believe in my heart, God. I confess with my mouth. That you, God, has raised Jesus from the dead. Therefore, I am saved. I am saved. Come on, repeat after me. I am saved. And, and I only speak the word of God. Hallelujah. I speak the word of God. I am more than a conqueror. I am victorious. I am above and not beneath. I am a child of God. And now I want you to speak that the blood annuls every ill covenant. Say, the blood of Jesus, the blood of the precious Lamb, the blood eh, that was spilled for me and for many. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Annuls every ill covenant, every ungodly covenant. It destroys every soul tie, ungodly soul tie, and now I am free. The blood is on my life, come on, say, the blood is on my life, and I am a new creation, I am a new creature. I take dominion, hallelujah, and I stand, come on, I stand, Hallelujah. Would God would have me to be planted. Therefore I blossom. My leaves shall not wither. But in all my ways, because I acknowledge God. Hallelujah. God got me. If you repeat it after me, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth because the confession, they can't just come from anywhere. Let them come from your heart. Let them come from your belief. Let them come from your faith. 
Your faith, your faith, your faith empowers the words that you speak. Your faith, your faith, your faith gives power and light to these dark situations. I don't care where you were. You are not where you were right now after watching this video. You are free. You are new. And let not your mouth be shut closed. Speak the word. Amen.